Hey babes, and welcome back to Rambles and Makeup with your rambling host, Dohi Sama. Today, we're gonna create a Yumiko Jabami look inspired by a queen of stage look they're gonna go together okay but grab your makeup grab your brushes grab your notepads because we will be talking about black butler and meet me in the bathroom hey dandelions future editor dohisama here and y'all i went back to do more research about black butler and i found out the biggest shock in my natural born life the Undertaker is CL's grandfather. Now, I have to put that in here because I reference Adrian as I'm doing my notes, and you'll get the rest later. But point is, he is CL's grandfather, and I never knew this, and I'm the wife. Y'all flabbergasted, but I wanted to put that in here. I don't know more. If I find out more, I can do a follow-up or a part two, but I just thought you should know because now I know. But yeah, love you lots. Bye-bye. All right. So today we're going to be talking about Black Butler because I've wanted to talk about it for a while and um, I didn't do research and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to talk about this anime, but I'm going to talk about it. Okay. If I talked about Perfect Blue, I'm going to talk about that one. So um, Black Butler was kind of one of those animes that I watched. I won't, I, I guess mo I mostly learned about it when I was in college. Um, yeah, because I tried to like, I bought one of the manga books, but I literally bought it because The Undertaker was on the first <laughs> page, like the cover. And I was like, oh, that's my man. So that was literally my only like motivation for it i never read it i can't tell you what it's about and i keep saying i'm gonna go back and read it but that day has kind of like never came and also there are like a lot of arcs in black butler and a lot of characters and i don't know what the hell really happened after the you know the original version so i'm gonna just talk about the original main characters that i know of and then if you want to hear about like the circus arc or you know the phantom of the opera arc or whatever other arc they got you're gonna have to let me know because i'm not gonna like invest my time in it unless i want to then it'll probably be like years from now but if that is something you would like to see then please request it because otherwise I don't feel it. So one thing I did forget to do that I guess I'll go back and do now while I'm talking. So Black Butler is, when it comes on, it comes on revealing this little boy who's like dressed all fancy. You know, I do not know or I forgot what time period this is in, but it's in Britain that I do know. Um... And so basically, this kid, his name is Ciel, Ciel Earl Phantom High, not Ciel like the K-pop singer, Ciel, C-I-E-L. Yes, he is basically, I'm going to just give you my cliff notes of it. Ciel got a trouble past, okay? He really does. He watched as his parents got murdered and then they were like torturing him and gonna offer him as a sacrifice like these people were in a cult and like really it feels like they were money hungry you know like you know you know like the typical like movies and stuff where Basically, you get more power and the more you do and like the more messed up you become these people. Uh, and so CL is like on the brink of death. And he comes across Sebastian and basically Sebastian is like, I what what is it that you seek? Why are you here? And. CL's basically at first he's like I don't know and then he goes on to be like well I want revenge and in return I'll give you my soul 
So Sebastian is helping CL do all of this because Sebastian wants CL. So apparently he has like this, oh, such, such great and like strong, sturdy soul. I don't know. That just kind of feels a little um, close to jail time, even for me talking about it in the anime perspective. But hey, uh, that's what he wanted was his soul. That's what they basically made a deal on. And so um, Sebastian is basically charged with doing everything CL says without any if, ands, or buts about it. He's kind of like his henchman, but he's a butler. Cause so like only CL knows that he is a demon because you know they made the contract or whatever. And a, a few other people, we'll get into them, they know, but like other humans don't really know who he is. So he always dresses up as a butler. Um in this household with CL and Sebastian. There are a few other people that I wanted to bring up and talk about because I feel like they don't get a lot of love and they deserve love because they are good characters. So one of them is named Baldroy. He is a horrible chef. All right. He cannot cook to save his life. He be burning up stuff. He really cannot get it together he is me how i used to be in the kitchen okay burning stuff up like not just getting it together that's him so that's Baldroy, and he seems kind of laid back for the most part until he gets upset then he's kind of like explosive um next character we are going to talk about her name is Marin, and uh, Y'all, she, so when Mayron first came on the scene, honestly, I was just like, why, 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 and who are you? Because she just seems so, like, scatterbrained. And not really like she knew what she was doing or saying. She just seemed dumb. But Mayron is actually... The sweetest thing ever. And she really seems to care about CL. And she is like the only female staff there. So kudos to her for that. Because I could never. I'd probably burn a whole mansion down. But next there's Finian. And he seems. I can't keep saying all of them seem sweet. They, they do though. But Finian he's really nice. He is. Like soft well kind of soft spoken he seems like he really loves animals finian has super strength okay that dude is strong and he is the gardener now i bring them up because honestly i feel like sebastian just hired them because they were good at their jobs they can give good you know backup to seal and him they know how to fight they can keep the manor safe, like, if anything goes wrong. And because CL has a lot of people after him and who thought that, like, he was dead, uh, you know, from time to time, they try to come in off him. And so, like, Mayron one time had to get her sniper assets out, and I was like, oh, she a sniper, and... Those glasses are a facade. That girl got perfect vision, perfect aim, perfect everything. Um, and then next there's Tanaka. And he is just so, he's wholesome. Like, I ain't got nothing to get. Usually he's just drinking tea. That's what I think, or coffee. And um, he's laughing about something. Sometimes he will shift. Usually he looks like a little... Uh, miniature character but sometimes he will shift into like you know an actual full-size adult elder but apparently um Tanaka escaped the slaughter the massacre rather 
and Tanaka, he escaped the massacre, and it, unlike any other normal human being, he goes back to work for Seal. Um, I don't know if he was just scared or if he was really loyal, but I would have been like, listen, listen. We're going to have to talk about a pay increase because the things I saw and what I escaped, you're not about to get over on me like that. And so there, okay, there's this girl. Her name is Elizabeth Milford. She is CL's cousin and his fiance. And I don't think CL really wants to marry baby child. I mean, I think he cares for her, but he doesn't really seem like he's too excited at the thought of life a marriage life with her i mean and right right because like it's your cousin i i understand that i wouldn't want to marry him either but uh she's always popping up at his like house she's always popping up she'll give him attitude whenever like he doesn't do what she wants him to do and so ciel and sebastian they are trying to find the people who did this. And they're also trying to, like, I guess, connect the crimes to other crimes that had been happening in the area. And so sometimes Elizabeth will come when CL is, like, in the case or about to start a case. And she's getting pressed at him because he can't make time for her. But it's like, baby child. CL is out here, like, oh, and she doesn't know what happened to him. So, like, she doesn't know that basically, you know, he was about to be sacrificed, you know. And I, I'm sure she knows about his parents, but just that they died. She, I, It doesn't go in great detail, but I know she doesn't know, like, Sebastian's a demon and they're out here trying to find people. She knows none of that. So that kind of causes them to be at odds with each other because poor CEO, he's trying to make it work and like care for this kid. But she, baby child, is not making it easy on him whatsoever. But I will say Elizabeth is adorable. Like for her to get on my nerves the way that she do, I have a heart for her and I'm like... <laughs> She just wants to be loved. Like, she's a little... She she doesn't know any better. She's sheltered, you know? And we can't really blame her for being sheltered like that because, I mean, I can say from experience, I know that I was kind of like a sheltered kid, you know? I didn't really know much about the world. And I'm not sheltered in the sense of, like, I didn't go out or nothing, but... I mean, I feel like my parents did a good job of protecting me from things, you know, and like not knowing. She didn't have to grow up as fast as he did, okay? So she was sheltered in that regard. That's what I'm trying to say. And I get it. I understand. And so it's just frustrating because at first she's all up in CEO grill, but it's just because she wants to be loved and like she wants to know that he loves her. And I'm sitting here like, first of all, Elizabeth, if you were worried about anybody taking your cousin girl, who gonna want him? Hmm? Who, who gonna want him with the history that he's had? Come on now, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And it's even funnier because I have an old teacher named Elizabeth and I always love being like Elizabeth behind her back. <laughs> Anywho, um, yes, so CL is trying to make it work and like, find these people who did this to his family and avenge them as the last like living phantom hive which if that doesn't tell you what kind of anime is this phantom hive then i don't really know what will but um so there is one person grill the name is grill Sutcliffe. oh grill is reckless reckless endangering a bad influence everything he is sadistic he a little bit crazy i'm sure he off his meds he is like a longer hair version of this character on um black clover except for 
he a little bit more psychotic than him. But um, so Grill is a reaper. So like Bleach, these people have reapers. Soul reapers. There's, you know, angels, demons in this world. The whole shebang is just it's a great lineup of stuff. And um, so Grail is trying to really when they first come on the scene, Grill runs across them and they're trying to look for the same culprit. And basically, they end up fighting, and Grill is in love with Sebastian. I, don't at me. Grill is in love with Sebastian, so he is trying to, like, fight Sebastian because he's just, like, intrigued by him. He calls him Bassy. Like, he does not respect this man <laughs> at all. I feel like he pushes his buttons on purpose, but Sebastian is just trying to handle it the best he can. And so there's Grail, and then there's another one. His name is William T. Spears. He is a Grim Reaper too, and he absolutely hates Grail, and he absolutely hates Sebastian. He hates Sebastian because he's a demon, right? And like he doesn't like demons, and like Soul Reapers, they're there to collect the lives of people and decide pretty much if they go to heaven or hell. Which <laughs> too much power, if you ask me. But so. William has to always come and clean up Grill's messes because Grill don't really do nothing. Grill is just sitting there, you know, trying to be a wife to Sebastian, and that's pretty much it. Um, so Grill is in love with Sebastian. They're always fighting whenever Grill can get a chance to be near him or whatever. It is just truly, it is a thing. And so there's this one other guy that I started talking about. His name is The Undertaker. And they don't really go into too much depth about him other than him being like The Undertaker. So I don't actually know where it is or when it is that it is revealed that like he used to be a Grim Reaper. But he... Yes, he used to have that lifestyle and he knows everything, everything. And whenever Sebastian and Sia comes to him, his payment is always that like if they want information for whatever the case is, they have to tell him a joke. And if the joke is funny and he deems it like, well, then they can know information. But he will literally sit there and make everybody tell him a joke for them to get what they want. And to me, that is just great because you're an undertaker. You work with dead bodies all day. And you mean to tell me that you just want to laugh like your job is that hard? Okay. And so undertaker, he's never really seen in any body's business. And I think what caught me off guard about the undertaker is they don't ever really show his face. And so, or at least back then, because they didn't have, when I first started watching Black Bullet, it was kind of like 2015. So a lot of these movies were not out that they have out now. So like a lot of things around these characters were a mystery. And back then I would just go search on Google to find out. And that's how I found out that The Undertaker was a, um, he used to be a ripper, but what got me was like when they did his face reveal, I was just like, Sebastian, the world could have you because the Undertaker is where it is at. Okay, that is my main squeeze. Like, that is the one that I am here for, fighting the war for. But, um, yeah, the Undertaker, he's a beautiful man, man. He's just chef's kiss. If you watch my podcast series, he will probably be a featured anime husband of mine. But, anyways, um, so the Undertaker is giving them information, CL and like Sebastian. And so they have a lot of cases that they follow. And I'm going to be honest with you, I did not go back through and look at every specific case. But I know one thing they were working on was like Jack the Ripper. A lot of these women were ended up ending up dead in these streets. And so they were trying to connect them and see, like, what was going on. Why were they ended up dead? Y'all, Sia ended up having to, like, 
go incognito he was wearing these dresses to like these events and sebastian is just there accompanying him the whole time sebastian is making him like take dance lessons and be the best that he can be and sebastian is like you cannot quit here you cannot give up like remember the only one who's gonna defeat you and like take you away is me and let me just let me just say i do not know really what the creators were thinking about when they made CL as young as they did and they made him and Sebastian as close as they did because even just watching it I was like the police are outside my door like right now they're oh, oh, it wasn't me okay so um yeah Sebastian is just out here he's taking care of CL being Sebastian is pretty much everything. He's the gardener. He's the cook. He's the cleaner. He escorts the guests. He goes and finds the information. He's the killer. He's the hitman. And Sebastian hates everything but cats. He really loves pussy cats. He does. Okay. And he he loves their paws, like how squishy their paws are and like how soft their fur is. It it is a mess, y'all. He even big cats, he is just like, you are adorable. And they will try to bite him and take his face off. And he just thinks it's like terms of endearment and like love languages. Come on, Sebastian, get it together. But I mean, he is from a place where I mean, I guess pleasure is pain, so, or pain is pleasure, rather. So, I mean, go ahead, Sebastian, do your thing. But, y'all, that whole anime had me, because even there was a part where they went to this church to find out information about um, this guy who was working with the, the con co convent, and I guess they were saying that it was religious people who was doing like the murders and like sacrificing people and stuff like that and they were trying to find out information and this lady she was a nun I think she was a black lady too I'm gonna have to go back and look it up because I I can't be clear on that one but there was this uh nun and she was like not trying to give them information. She was like, my lips are sealed. I ain't got nothing for you. Like, you need to leave. You're trash. I'm not helping y'all. She was on all that energy. So, Sebastian tells CL to wait outside. And CL's like, don't do anything rash. And he walks off. Y'all, the church was shaking. And I'm just sitting here like, you're a sister. You're a whole holy sister. And you're going to let this tempest come up in here and rob you that quick, that easy? But I mean, hey, he, he tore it down and he got the information needed. And so they're basically on this quest to find all these bad guys the detectives don't really like them because they feel like they're sticking their nose in business and they're not police and cl is technically just a kid so they don't understand like why he won't just go be a kid but his family was murdered like you wouldn't want to just be a kid either if you know what i'm saying like if somebody had did that to your family i say that but then again i don't think i would have been out here making contracts with devils you know, like telling them they could have my soul for revenge. But I mean, to each their own, CEO. To each their own. Um, so I don't know if this is true, but I'm going to speculate that CEO kind of has like a bounty on his head because a lot of people are trying to take him out. Like when they find out that he is indeed still like alive and breathing. And they, a lot, honestly, a lot of people who do business with him try to get over with him because he is a quote unquote kid and they feel like he doesn't know anything. You know, they kind of talk down to him and like treat him like less than because he is younger than them. And the great thing about that is that he has Sebastian. So 
Whenever they try to wrong him, Sebastian comes back and writes those wrongs. And it is just the greatest thing ever. And so, uh, season two was pretty much about, there was this other butler who was also a demon and like had also made a contract with another human boy. And I'm just sitting here like, directors, what? what what what's going on like who hurt you who who hurt you what happened to talk to me about it but so this other boy he is also like contracted to um a demon i think his name was like claude or something like that and hey i mean claude he was um a little looker but he just wasn't no that's it. like grill would say but so they ended up even beefing Clyde and like um Sebastian and I honestly think it's like an ego thing for Sebastian like he don't want nobody to think that they are better than him you know and he has a duty to do like he has to serve CL to the very end and um I'm not gonna lie I saw one preview of a movie and it looked like Sebastian had got killed and uh, I have been wanting to watch that movie for the longest time, but I'm like, if Sebastian dies, I'm gonna be one of the most bitter, one of the most bitterest, and that's not even a word, but one of the most bitterest ladies to roam this planet. Cause animes really have a hard time not killing off my husbands. And I'm starting to think it's just simply because I'm black. They know that they got a black watcher in the audience and they like, she don't get no rights. She don't deserve no love from the characters. Let's off all of them. And that's probably totally a lot, but it just feels good to say stuff like that. So let me have this. Um, but yeah, I don't, it's, I think it's called Book of the Atlantic. I have to look it back up and include it in here. But yeah, there I know that there's a circus arc and I kind of remember the circus art, um, they were going to the circus to find out information as always, find this killer. And, um, there was like these different people here. And one of them was like a snake boy. And somehow he ends up working with Sebastian and CL. And I'm just like, oh, so you part of the manor now? I saw that on the wiki. And once again, I don't really know what's going on with all of that because I did not watch past uh I watched the circus arc but I don't remember at all uh, somebody like or I don't remember the snake dude becoming a servant so when I saw that I was like dang I really need to go back and like watch up on this because I'm struggling out here. I'm struggling with all these new developments. And oh, yes. So there's a lady named Madam Red, who is CL's aunt. Her real name is Angelina Dales. This lady, she has like kind of fallen off the deep end. Okay. After her sister Nun was killed, she basically was just not the same anymore. And she's been on like this murderous streak, but she won't hurt CL. She does love him. And if I'm not mistaken, to her, CL looks a lot like her sister that passed. Then there's another guy named Lau. He runs an opium den. And he has an assistant named Ran Mao. She's always with him. And honestly, I thought that that was like his wife or something like that. Because they are always together. Wherever he go, she go. And um, he... Okay. This guy... They never really say what his end goal is because Madam Red had this person who was also like, I don't really know if this guy was a uh, demon, so to say. I think she was using Grill at one point. Yeah, that's what it was. She was using Grill and Grill like flipped the switch and became, you know, whatever. Um, But so... Lau just kind of is always in CEO business. All of them is really like everybody wants to know what CEO is doing. But the moment CEO asks them what they doing, what they got going on, all of a sudden 
he needs to stay in the kid's place. And uh, so Lyle, he's just always trying to figure out what this guy is up to. But he never says why. He just wants to know. Like then when like the sign of trouble comes or something like that, guess where Lyle is? Gone. Okay, gone, gone, gone. And at one point, and this is just me going off memory now, I'm pretty sure like the Queen of England has something to do with all of this too. And like the angels. And it was just really, this show, honestly, is about like hierarchy and places of power that go overboard and they don't protect people like they claim they will. And CL, he got burned at the stake because to me, they didn't have to kill his parents. You know, like his parents didn't seem like they was doing anybody any wrong or anything like that. And they were trying to take these heirlooms from him when it first came on. And I don't know why they thought, I really don't know why they assumed sacrificing them was gonna bring about anything. I don't know why they thought that that was the way to go. Cause obviously it was not. And now all these people <laughs> are getting got because they basically just, wanted too much power so the last things i really remember about black butler is that obviously cl is still alive like sebastian has not gotten the soul yet and how long are you gonna wait dude a whole lifetime i mean i guess so i i guess so he that well, that's what the contract was so sebastian and cl are still rocking it and like I said, there's more movies and there's more stuff out now about them. But I did not want to get into all of that because I ain't got time to watch all those movies, especially when they're not on streaming services. You have to pay for them. Those movies. And I will. Like, don't get me wrong. I will. But I'm just saying, like, I wasn't about to blow like a hundred dollars to watch all those movies and then compile it into a note over the course of two days i didn't have the time to do it really because i have a niece and a nephew here so doing the bare minimum is what we are trying to accomplish this week but like i said from what i remember and from the wiki CL is trying to get revenge on bad people who basically did wrong by him and his family. And Sebastian went and hired Mayrin, Baldroy, and Finian to basically give their lives to protect this boy. And they seem to be pretty okay with that, honestly. Um, Finian, I forgot to mention, was actually a test subject. He was a test subject, which is why he has the super strong strength. And honestly, I I don't like any movies or animes where people are test subjects because that just pulls at my heartstrings. I feel like that is just such a bad life to have, you know? Like, no freedoms, you're telling these people this stuff hurts and you don't want to do this no more and they're just not concerned with you. And so, really, it's like Sebastian. It's hard to call him a bad guy because, you know, like he did those things for them, but it's your nature, sir, who you are, you're not, you're a bad man, okay? And, I mean... Sebastian is a husband too. <laughs> Sebastian is a husband too. He's just, oh my goodness. Sebastian is the husband you're not supposed to have. Like, he is the one you know if you bring him home, tables will be flipped. But, um, yeah, I really want to know, like, 
is he gonna marry Elizabeth? You know, like, is she gonna have the happy ending that she wants? Cause I'm rooting for baby girl, okay? She deserves all the love in the world. I just wish sometimes she'd come down and like, let's see who talk to her and get her mental right. Cause that girl be falling off the deep end, okay? She really do. And Elizabeth, I think on one hand, because she is so young, you know, she all she knows really is that this guy is going to marry her and he's her cousin and he's like, she thinks he's so amazing and so wonderful and she just wants to spend all her time with him. And I mean, he, see, you know, he's a guy, he doesn't really get it, you know, and he's not trying to focus on love. He out here trying to find people who ruined his family. And she over here with this love business. And CL is like, I just, I just want to kill. I just want to thrive and survive. Well, baby, now you got a wife to look after. But as I stated, they're also kids. So I know it is kind of hard for both of them to cope with what they think marriage is or should be. Especially when they have to deal with like these classy people in their family who has opinions about everything all right gang so this is my yumiko jabami inspired look i actually called it ace queen of spades that's who i'm going for which is why the spades are on my face but because it's because she's a gambler you know so like i was trying to cross reference the two but yes of course as always i will include pictures this was a short episode i'm surprised but we obviously didn't do much um black butler i know it was a short anime review but i can't tell you everything because, well, I mean, I can tell you what I can, what I want, right? But what I mean is, like I said, it's a lot of different arcs now. And I just knew the original, like, three-part series of the Kuroshi. I think that's how you say it. But it is one that I do recommend you go watch. I mean, I give it a 9 out of 10. Because the comedy is gold. Sebastian is great. Um... There's a lot of innuendos in there, so you might not want to watch it if you're, like, under 18 or around people under 18. Um, just because, you know, we got to give warnings around here. I'm not trying to set nobody up for failure. But it is a really good anime. Like I said, it, it just, it talks about stuff around, like, religion and, like, demons and humans and angels. So if those things, like, make you uncomfortable or you feel like you can't get behind it, then don't watch it. But... I would watch it again. I want to watch it again because I am confuffled with all of the stuff that has been happening since then. But yeah, CL is a kid who has a demon protecting him until he dies and he's going to take his soul. And despite all of that, we still root for CL and Sebastian because they are the only like decent ones in the show. We root for The Undertaker too because hey, that's, that's baby right there. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please kiss me with the heart. Please comment what animes you would like me to review, uh, what mangas you may like me to read, any face paint looks you would like for me to do. Um, KK Goody, I will do an anime review about that when I have a longer look. So yeah. Guys, thank you for rocking with me. Uh, as always, I will include pictures and you can go find my socials for the finished results. I love you guys. I hope that you had an amazing week thus far. I hope you have a great Friday and an incredible weekend. Until next week, please always remember that the Lord does love you and blesses you. May he keep you and I love you as well. Goodbye, dandelions. Mm -hmm. See?